What's up everybody, it is Lawrence and I am back from a three week hiatus. I was on vacation in the Philippines. Look at this nice caramel skin tone that I have right now rocking. Um, but it was a really great vacation. Uh, but during that vacation, I had a huge issue. I was on Reddit and I was reading sneakers and I realized and I thought I missed the bread Air Jordan 11 drop because I started seeing it everywhere. Um, I panicked, I obviously looked at the release date, it wasn't until December 14th. Uh, I saw on StockX the actual price is only $270 I think I paid for this, about $50 more than your typical $220 release price. But for me, I don't want to deal with it and I really wanted it early just because the Air Jordan 11, if you guys don't know, is my favorite silhouette of all time. Let's start with uh, this beautiful StockX cardboard box. I'm gonna cover my uh, my address right there. And uh, it is uh, done in a cardboard color with some tape on it. It is a wonderful, wonderful box because I believe the contents inside are authentic. Uh, I'm gonna open this up with a pair of scissors because I don't own a knife. Uh, if you guys want to send me a knife for these unboxing videos, I'm still not giving you my address. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's get this open. So this is the Air Jordan 11 box done in the bread colorway. Uh, as you can see, it is your typical Nike box, and it's not like the other kind of Christmas-based releases that have happened over the last several years. The uh, actually, just, I have this box in front of me. Well, they came in these really fancy boxes. Uh, this is a Space Jam version, and so it has this like sweet ass 45. It has a bunch of the Looney Tunes stuff because the Space Jam version is from uh, the movie and one of the OG colorways. But uh, this year they went the exact opposite route, which is going, trying to be as true to the original form of its release as ever. So this is going to be the, the most um, like the original release, which was done in 1996 when I was a wee lad uh, at the age of 11 watching uh, the, the heiress uh, Michael Jordan kind of get into uh, the May Finals and then finally winning his fourth MVP title in the Finals and also bring the Bulls to the, uh, I believe their fourth uh, Finals win as well uh, of the NBA Conference Finals. So uh, he mainly wore the red colorway during the, I think maybe solely wore the red colorway uh, during the finals. And so uh, it's, it's got a lot of history behind it. And I believe, I'm not 100% sure, if you want to correct me in the comments below, I believe this was their 72 and 10 season, which is 72 wins and 10 losses. Here's a little bit more of a history lesson as well. Uh, the last time this these were retro was in 2012. So it was obviously before I started recollecting uh, sneakers all over again. Um, and uh, it was retro three, two other times before that. So this is the fourth retro release uh, since 1996. And this is going to be, like I said, the most true to form part uh, or true to form retro that they've had to the 1996 version. So let's start by looking at the box. This is your typical Nike box, the orange and the black and, and the cardboard color. Uh, on the back, you will see engineered and built uh, to the something specification. I can't actually read it on my camera right now, uh, but you guys can, and that's right there. And then obviously in the front, the famous Just Do It. Opening up the box a little bit. This is the first time you guys are seeing this with me. One, two, three. Is a trash bag. Uh, <laughs> let me uh, let me remove the StockX thing first. Uh, I would say shout out to StockX for uh, for facilitating such an easy sale. I was able to actually get these within, I think like three or four days of ordering them. There's a little StockX symbol. For those that don't know, this is not an ad, but uh, if you guys do want to pay resale, um, I, I've heard a lot of bad customer service reviews and stuff about StockX. I personally have not had those issues, but I also don't pay a lot of resale and I don't pay, uh, I don't buy a lot of resale. So let's get into the, uh, the box. So this is the, Nice little garbage bag. Um, the Concord's also released with a garbage bag, uh, and that's over here. Uh, these are one of my favorite shoes of all time. My favorite colorway of all time, of my favorite silhouette of all time, are still the Space Jams, but these are the Concord's, uh, and they also uh, had this kind of like really weird trash bag type thing instead of tissue paper. Um, once you flip that out, you have your beautiful Air Jordans. Oh, 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 oh,
Beautiful, right guys? And let's, uh, oh wait, 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 there's another card in here. This is uh, the Air Jordan silhouette is one of the most iconic silhouettes in the history of sneakers. This season, Jordan Brandon celebrates the model by delivering detailed craftsmanship, honoring MJ's first triple crown run. League MVP, All-Star MVP, and Finals MVP. This instant classic will leave you saying, it's gotta be the shoes. I highly doubt that because uh, he was kind of winning championships without the Air Jordan 11. Um, but uh, also, little history. There's so much history about this, with these shoes. Um, so this is uh, one of the Tinker Hatfield designs. Uh, Tinker Hatfield is probably the most prolific sneaker designer of possibly all time, but definitely at Nike. Um, and uh, he was the one that designed the Air Max 1, the Air Jordan 3, um, and, and really kept Jordan at Air Jordan, uh, at, at Jordan brand and with Nike. And uh, the shoes themselves, are his favorite design of all time. So uh, I would agree with him because it's also my favorite design of all time across any brand. But here is the Air Jordan 1, Air Jordan 11, bread. Uh, bread stands for black and red. Uh, very, very quick first impressions. It's really like any other Air Jordan 11. Uh, the major difference that I see right now is it says 23 on the back here, on the back heel over here. Uh, instead of the 45 that you have seen on uh, retro releases in the last couple of years. So this this Concord, I believe, is from 2018 to last year. Um, and so that patent leather is, is super important as well. Looking at the patent leather, it has a super high cut compared to a lot of the retro releases that happened before. What, a lot, what happened with the Air Jordan 11 is over time, they actually lowered the patent leather so that it, it looked a little sleeker um, and less bulky with the patent leather, but this is truer to the 1996 release with the higher cut. The other major thing is that this is back and a lot of people have issues with it, but I, 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 I mean, I don't really know why. If you look at the very front of this, right in the middle, uh, I believe this was originally a manufacturing defect in the original run of these shoes, but um, that little peak is something that people really, really dislike, I think starting with the Space Jam release, I like it. I don't know. I don't even see why people care that much. Um, there's actually a little little peak over here, which is weird on the side of the shoe, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so that patent leather makes it look great on the court as well as off the court. And a lot of people wear this shoe specifically for lifestyle reasons now, obviously, but uh, it's, it's one of those shoes where you can literally put on a tux and it'll still look freaking damn good. Uh, then at the very top of it, you have ballistic nylon, uh, and that's, uh, that's done in a really, really kind of tough material. They've used a lot of premium materials on the Air Jordan 11, so if you look at the bottom over here, you have that carbon fiber plate. There's actually two Zoom Air units. There's one in the forefoot, one in the heel area as well. And so you're, uh, you also have a relatively supple leather on the back heel over here uh, near the back of the shoe. So the materials themselves are really, really great for this shoe, and obviously you have the, the awesome bread color in the translucent sole, as well as uh, the, the Air Jordan in the middle over there, if you can see this uh, this little guy. Um, the bread colorway is probably one of the most famous colorways, uh, starting with Air Jordan 11, it, it's a black and red version, and then you also have other black and red versions of it, which is the Air Jordan 4. All right, and uh, that's it. This is the Air Jordan 11 done in the bread colorway. If you guys like what you see, specifically the caramel color on my skin, hit that subscribe button, Give me a thumbs up, and uh, I can't wait to actually get these on. I'm actually going to wear them today. I'm going to go to Trader Joe's in the next five minutes. going to put these on and rock them right away. Uh, for those waiting for this release, this is going to drop on December 14th. You should not have an issue getting these. Um, typically, the, the release for the Air Jordan 11 is so that Nike or Jordan Brand has a huge sales spike in the middle of their Q4 period, and uh, that's ultimately why this shoe gets released. I think last year the Concours were one of the biggest uh, releases of the year, if not the biggest of the year. And that's it. Uh, this is Air Jordan 11 unboxing. Until next time, peace.